All right, so let's let's take a look here um, and let's finish up uh, section 4.6. Again, we were talking about the other uh, graphs of trig functions, uh, cosecant, secant, cotangent, tangent, and we'd started off with an exercise talking about reciprocals because really this is a, a lot of, of how we figure out what these graphs look like. And the basic idea was that if I take the reciprocal of a small positive number, I get a big positive number. If I take the reciprocal of a small positive or small negative number, I get a big negative number. And then the opposite also works. If I take the reciprocal of a big positive number, I get a small positive number and so forth. So we talked about these relationships and reciprocals and that sort of thing and came up with some decimal approximations. And then we graphed um, the sine function. And then we took the reciprocal of each one of these small positive numbers, and we got big positive numbers. So this small uh, arc right here, this small loop on the sine curve, creates a big branch that goes upward on the graph of cosecant. And these small negative numbers on the sine graph, when I do the reciprocal of those negative numbers, I get these huge negative numbers right here. And again, the closer I get to zero, the larger I get in the negative direction. The closer I get to zero, the larger I get in the negative direction. Um, and then this small positive number right here, when I take the reciprocal, I get some huge positive number on this part of the branch that opens up, and it just repeats like that. And we talked about the period being two pi. We've got these asymptotes that occur every pi units. So we talked about how we can give it a starting place. The first one occurs at zero, and then we do k times however often they repeat, and k would be any integer, so you can plug in a positive or negative whole number, including zero. Um, and, and that's basically what we talked about there. And we, we said, you know, it's nice to be able to graph those six key points here. Um, you at least have to know where the asymptotes are, and you've got to know that, that lowest point right here, that minimum value right here, and that maximum value there. And you'd want to label both the x and the y coordinate for each one of those. And then we talked about how we graph cosine and labeled those. And we take these small positive numbers um, and find the reciprocal of those. We get these huge positive numbers right here on this branch of the, the graph of secant. Small negative numbers, big negative numbers when we find the reciprocal. The asymptotes on this were a little bit more interesting. The, the first one, and we'll can choose a convenient one right here, this one occurs at positive pi halves. And then again, there's pi units in between every one of those. So it starts at pi halves and then repeats every k pi units. That's how we write those. And the period, again, is 2 pi. We talked about the domain and the range. And then we said, you know, well, once you've got those parent graphs figured out, you can figure out um, what, and again, it said one graph of each, uh, one cycle of each one of those graphs is. So the 2 right here, all it does is take this graph that we were looking at up above and changes all the y coordinates, doesn't change any of the x coordinates. So it vertically stretches. So instead of being at uh, 0, 1, it starts at 0, 2. Instead of being pi thirds comma 2, it would be pi thirds comma 4. We'd have a point way up there on each one of those. So that's a vertical stretch of that. And then this changes the period. So instead of having a period of 2 pi, we've got a period of pi on this. So it completes one entire cycle, one branch going upward and one branch going downward in pi units. So if it starts right here at zero, ends at pi, the middle and where another asymptote would be would be at pi halves. And then we talked about how to write those and so forth. So hopefully you've got a decent idea. And these are fairly complicated graphs. You've got to, you've got to keep track of a lot of the details there. So um, let's go ahead and, and turn our attention to this next idea, which is we're going to graph tangent and cotangent. And luckily, these, these tend to be a little bit easier, a little bit simpler graph. Um, but let's go ahead and complete this. So it says, think about the unit circle, then find the exact answer and a decimal approximation for the following. So if you think about the unit circle, so we've got this quadrant right here. This point right here would be 0, comma, oh, excuse me, uh, the x coordinate, 1, comma, 0. And then we've got these values right here. So again, those common angles that we memorized in, in chapter one. So this would be radical three over two comma one half. This would be radical two over two comma radical two over two. And then this point right here would be uh, one half comma radical three over two. And then this point right here is zero comma one. So there are the X and Y coordinates for each one of those. And then remember, the tangent is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, the y over the x. So this is going to be 0 over 1. 
which of course is zero. Okay, so we've got our, our answer right there and we've got our decimal approximation. So let's do for pi six, that's gonna be the y coordinate over the x coordinate. And again, if you've got these memorized, then you're really uh, in great shape here. So the y coordinate's one half, and this is radical three over two. I'm gonna flip that one over and I'm gonna multiply. So this is gonna be, uh, let's see, two on the top, radical three on the bottom. So I've got one over radical three, which a lot of times we write as um, radical three over three. But let's just grab the calculator and let's figure out what that is as a, as a decimal. So I'll clear this stuff off and we'll do one divided by radical three. Now, if you think for just a second, didn't we do a bunch of this? Didn't we find a bunch of these values here? So that's gonna be about 0.6, okay? And so hopefully you remember those. This is going to be the y coordinate over the x coordinate here. Um, so the tangent is radical 2 over 2 over radical 2 over 2. So the tangent of pi fourths is 1. Uh, so we're in good shape there. And of course, the decimal approximation would be 1. All right. And then at pi thirds, well, that's going to be radical 3 over 2 over 1 half. So that's like the reciprocal of this. This ends up being radical 3, which if you type that into your calculator, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Radical 3. Some of you may have that memorized. About 1.7. So approximately 1.7. Um, and then the tangent of pi halves. Well, the tangent of pi halves is going to be the y coordinate over the x coordinate. So that's going to be 1 over 0. So that is, well, we can't divide, divide by 0. So this would be undefined. Okay, we don't have that. Okay, and then I've got this question right here. What would change if the angles in the problems up above were negative? So instead of pi 6, I did negative pi 6. Instead of pi 4, I did negative uh, pi 4. Well, that would put us down here. Well, the x coordinates would all be the same, but the y coordinates would all be negative. So each one of those is going to be negative. Tangent is negative in that quadrant. Okay, so the answers would be negative, okay? Now, remember what the tangent, uh, what we talked about what the tangent of 89 uh, degrees was on, on the first page. And if I remember correctly, um, it was like 52 or something like that. So let's flip back here and let's see what that was. Yep, 57.2, so 57.2. So the tangent of 89 is 57.2. And we talked about well, the reason for that is the closer this angle gets to 90 degrees or closer to, it gets to pi halves, the larger the opposite side is in comparison with the adjacent side. So we just get a larger and larger value there. Um, and that can be really helpful in figuring out what the graph of tangent looks like. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, the tangent of zero is zero. So if I plug in a zero for an angle, I get out a ratio of zero. Um, and let's mark this off. This says we're going to graph this from negative pi halves to three pi halves. So this is negative pi halves. This would be zero. This is going to be pi halves. This is going to be pi. And this is going to be three pi halves. Okay, so we've got our, our graph figured out. And then this is, of course, one and two, negative one and negative two and so forth. Okay, so if I plug in a zero into tangent, because I'm going to graph y equals the tangent of x. If I plug in a zero, I get out a zero. If I plug in a pi six, so pi six would be about right there. If I plug in pi six, I get about 0.6. If I plug in pi fourths, which would be smack dab in the middle here, this is gonna be pi fourths in the middle of zero and pi half, so I get a one. So I get that value right there. If I plug in pi thirds, which would be about right here, I get 1.7, so I get something up about right here. And if I plug in tangent of pi, uh, pi halves, I don't get an answer at all, okay? So let's think about what happens here. I'm getting these values that are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then I don't get an answer right here. Well, that might ring a bell with some of the other problems that we've done so far, some of those other graphs of, of uh, trig functions. But let's think about this right here. The tangent of 89, 89 is just a little, 89 degrees is just a little bit less than pi halves. And I get this huge number right here. I get way up here at 57. It's even off the charts. So what do you suppose happens right here at pi halves because the function's undefined? Well, if you think about what happens because we're dividing by zero on those previous examples, 
we end up with a vertical asymptote, okay? So I've got a vertical asymptote at pi halves, okay? So I've got a graph that looks something like this so far. It comes up here and then goes pretty much vertical right there. Um, this point right here is pi fourths comma one. This point right here is zero comma zero. And then let's consider our answers to this question right here. What would happen if the, an if the angles that we used here were all negative? Well, if they were all negative, the answers would just be negative. So if I plugged in a negative pi six, I'd get negative 0.6, okay? If I plugged in a negative pi fourths, so the tangent of negative pi fourths, it would be negative one. So I'm gonna go to negative pi fourths, and I'm gonna go to negative one. I've got that piece on the graph. Well, what do you suppose would happen the closer we get to negative pi halves? Say I plugged in negative 89 degrees, or a number that was just a little bit less than pi halves, like 1.57, 1.56, somewhere in that neighborhood. Well, these are just gonna get larger and larger and larger in the negative direction. So what happens is I have a vertical asymptote right there. Now, the cool part about the tangent, as opposed to the other ones, is its period is just pi units. It repeats every 180 degrees or every pi units. So I get this exact same shape over here. So it looks something like this. Exact same shape right there. Now, if you don't believe me, let's just double check. Let's think about what the tangent of pi is. Tangent of pi. Pi would be over here. Coordinate would be negative one comma zero. It's the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate, so that would be zero. Well, let's do, uh, let's see, in between here and here, this would be three pi-fourths. Three pi-fourths. Three pi-fourths would be right there, okay? So on the unit circle, that coordinate is going to be negative radical two. Whoops. Three pi-fourths is right here. That's right. Negative three pi-fourths, okay? So this is pi, half, pi halves, and this is uh, pi, so this would be three pi fourths. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so you've got me. Let, me. let me back up and make sure we're clear. I want to find the tangent of three pi fourths. That's what I want to find. Okay? So three pi fourths is right here. On the unit circle, three pi fourths would be right here. And the, the x and y coordinates there would be negative radical two over two, radical two over two. So if I take the y coordinate, put it over the x coordinate, I get radical two over radical two, but one of them's positive, one of them, one of them's negative, so I get this value right here. So this would be three pi fourths, comma, negative one. Uh, if I went forward pi fourths from that value right there, that's gonna be five pi fourths, comma, one. And you, you can double check me on that if we were to draw that on the unit circle. 3 pi, or excuse me, 5 pi fourths is right here. Both the coordinates there would be negative radical 2 over 2. So I'd have a positive 1 uh, once I find the ratio of those. Okay? So it does just have this kind of swooping pattern. Kind of looks like x cubed, but there's no way that can be because it does have this vertical asymptote. Starts down here, ends up here. Um, it has a period of pi units. The domain is any number you want from negative infinity to infinity the only thing that we don't get an answer for is wherever those asymptotes are. So let's think again about how we write that. Whoops. X not equal to, give it one place where it has an asymptote, so that's going to be pi halves, and then plus K times however often it repeats. So how far is it in between each one of those sets of asymptotes? Well, from negative pi halves to pi halves is pi units. From pi halves to three pi halves, that's pi units. So this would be... Uh, plus k pi. The range, think about uh, if we squish this onto the y-axis, you get any number out you can possibly imagine. And then on these graphs, there's only three key points, and those three key points are right here, here, and here. Okay, so I'm going to highlight each one of those, and then let's make sure that they're labeled. I've got pi fourths comma one, zero comma zero, and this point, I didn't label it yet, this is negative pi fourths comma negative one. So if you've got those three points labeled and the asymptotes labeled, you've got one complete cycle and you've got that figured out. So there are the key points. And then it gets, again, let's write down the asymptotes. The asymptotes would be, give it a starting place. It wouldn't matter if you started right here or over right here. So let's say we're gonna start at pi halves and then k times how often it repeats. It repeats every pi units, okay? Now, 
that took a little while to explain, but consider this compared to the cotangent. And think about the relationship of cotangent and tangent. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other. So if I want to find what the graph of cotangent looks like, I can take the reciprocal of these values right here. So let's think about it this way. Okay, Remember on all the other ones that we've done, we've said, well, if you find the reciprocal of 0, you get undefined. So you get a vertical asymptote. Okay, So I'm going to have a vertical asymptote right there. Follow that 0 right down here. I've got a vertical asymptote. Okay, Vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Well, it also hits 0 right here. So let's follow this straight down and make a vertical asymptote. So you'll notice automatically we've got our asymptotes in a different place. But then consider this, and you need to think really carefully about this. Take these numbers right here. These y values are all between 0 and 1. So these are small positive numbers. The reciprocal of small positive numbers are big positive numbers. And this number right here, 1, is easy to find the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 1 is 1. Let's follow this straight down. They both go through this point. They both go through pi fourths, comma, 1. But again, these values right here are all small positive numbers. The reciprocal of small positive numbers are big positive numbers. So this starts way up here and goes like this. Okay? Way up here. And goes like that. So if I were to take this small number right here, let's say this number right here was one tenth, its reciprocal would be 10. That's why we'd be way up here on this red graph right here. Now, all of these numbers right here on this portion of the graph, so on this portion of the graph right here, all of these are big positive numbers. Well, let's think again about the relationship. The relationship between cotangent and tangent is their reciprocals. So I need to find the reciprocal of all of these. Well, if these are big positive numbers, the reciprocal of those are small positive numbers. Okay, And hopefully this makes sense. This is undefined. It was undefined because we had 0 over 1. What happens if you do the reciprocal of undefined? What's, what happens if I flip this over? I get 0 over 1, which is 0. So there's my value right there. And I'm going to make this look a little bit better. Um, so it's going to look like this. Curve around here, hit that point. Make that nice and fat so it looks like it actually hit it, okay? And then I've got this point right here. What's the reciprocal of negative 1? Negative 1, so I'm going to follow this straight down here, and I'm going to put a negative 1. These are all huge negative numbers. The reciprocals of big negative numbers are small negative numbers, so they're going to do this. And then right here, again, I'm approaching 0 again. That's why I've got an asymptote here. But these are all small negative numbers. The reciprocals of small negative numbers are all big negative numbers, so I get something that looks like this. Okay, So here's what cotangent looks like. And again, it just repeats every pi units like uh, tangent does. So it's going to look like this. And this part of the graph is going to look like this. So tangent starts back here with an asymptote at negative pi halves and goes up from left to right. Cotangent is kind of a flip of that. It starts with a vertical asymptote at 0, starts way up here, and goes down. So the period for both of these is pi. The domain on this one is all real numbers except for wherever we have an asymptote. And we start off at 0, and then k times however often um, we hit an asymptote. So that's going to be pi units right here. Okay. The range, again, we cover everything in the y direction, so from negative infinity to infinity. And then I need three key points. Well, this one right here was the same on both, okay? So I've got that one. Where would this one right here be? Well, let's see. This asymptote was at pi halves, so we get pi halves, comma, and again, the reciprocal of undefined is going to be zero. And this point right here would be three pi fourths, comma, reciprocal of negative one was negative one. So those are the three key points that we're talking about these guys right here, okay? And then, of course, the asymptotes, I'd write it, it's kind of the same as this. It's what's not included in the domain. So again, we'd start at 0, and then plus k times however often those repeat, so that's uh, k pi. So there's the graph of tangent. Here's the graph of cotangent. And then let's take a quick look at a couple of transformations here. So again, uh, just to kind of reiterate, um, 
<coughs> pardon me, tangent has asymptotes at negative pi halves and pi halves, starts down here and goes up, hits through zero and negative one and one and so forth. Cotangent starts up here and goes down like that, and it's got asymptotes at zero and at pi, but they both have a, a period of, of pi units. So I'm going to blow this up, and we're going to think about this for just a second. Two times tangent. So I find this uh, to be a little bit useful. Okay? I think about the general shape. It looks like that. The two is just a vertical stretch. All it does is take all the y values and make them twice as tall as they used to be. So this is negative pi halves, and this is positive pi halves. So I've got asymptotes there. And those are x-coordinates, so those don't change at all. So I'm going to put an asymptote right here at pi halves and right here at negative pi halves. So pi halves and negative pi halves. And this point right here, if I vertically stretch 0, it's still 0. So it goes through that point right there. And this normally is pi fourths comma 1. Well, it's not going to be pi fourths comma 1. It's going to be pi fourths comma, remember, it's been vertically stretched, so it's going to be pi fourths comma 2. And that's going to be stretched down by a factor of 2. So here's what the graph looks like. Looks very much the same. It's just been vertically stretched. So again, we'll label the points. This is pi fourths comma 2, 0 comma 0. And this is negative pi fourths comma negative 2. And it says graph two periods and label at least three points. So I could come over here and I could say, all right, um, it's going to go through like this. It's going to look the same. And this piece is going to be, let's see, up here like that. Okay. So I've got what it looks like. I've got things labeled. I've got the asymptotes labeled. Again, I'm going to put an x equals on that asymptote and an x equals on that asymptote. Okay, so we've got the right graph there. And then let's think about what uh, tangent of 2x. So that has a 2 and that has a 2, but they occur in different places. And look at what this does to x. It times is that by 2. It's going to increase the speed of the graph. It's going to cycle faster, so that's going to decrease the period. So let's figure out what this looks like. The period on this new graph is going to be the old period divided by 2. So the period's going to be pi halves. So if we think about this, it's only going to go to, well, instead of having an asymptote right here at negative pi halves and positive pi halves, um, we haven't slid this left, right, or up, up, down, or anything. So it's only going to go half that far this way and half that far uh, to the right. So half of pi halves is pi fourths. So it's going to have an asymptote at pi fourths and an asymptote at negative pi fourths. So I'll write x equals on both of those. It's still going to start down here and go up, so it's still going to go like this. But then we want to label some points. So I'm going to zoom in here so we can label this. So remember, this is pi fourths and this is negative pi fourths. So this point right here is still 0, 0. But it's going to hit 1 sooner or later, and it's also going to hit negative 1 sooner or later. Well, if this is pi fourths, remember what the relationship is. This is kind of like, remember that whole idea where we talked about beginning, middle, end, and quarters? Begins here, ends here, middle is here, and here are the quarters. Well, so this is halfway in between these two points right here. Well, half of pi fourths is pi eighths, comma one. And that tells us what this one would be, negative pi eighths, comma negative one. And then I can just draw an asymptote here. It said draw two of them, two cycles. So, <coughs> pardon me, I'm going to zoom back out. There are the two cycles. I've labeled some asymptotes. I've labeled three key points. Should be in really good shape there. So um, I'm going to let you think about this for just a second. It's, it's important that you understand the basic shape of these. Secant, cosecant, can't, tangent, cotangent. Again, they're a bit complicated, but you really need to memorize the shape so that you know what the parent graphs look like. Again, asymptote at negative pi halves and pi halves, because it's got a period of pi, starts down here and goes up, hits these key points that are right at the middle and the quarters of that uh, cycle there. Same thing here, except for we've got an asymptote of 0, an asymptote of pi, starts up here and goes down, hits the middle point at pi halves comma 0, quarter point at pi fourths comma 1, 
and the three quarter point at three pi fourths comma negative one. So there's some nice symmetry here um, and making adjustments on those hopefully is relatively easy. But let's take a look at this next page. So if you flip the page over, it's got graphs of all, all six of the trig functions. It's got their domain and their ranges and things like that. So here's one graph of the sine function, one graph of the cosine function. Notice the labeling on the axes and that sort of thing. Here's a graph of the tangent function. So we've got the tangent starting down here and going up here, vertical asymptote at negative pi halves and positive pi halves. All right. So we're in pretty good shape with those three. These are absolutely fundamental. Got to have these memorized and understand what those look like. Now, the reason that these are um, ordered the way they are is notice that right below the sine is the cosecant and right below, below the cosine is the secant and right below the tangent is the cotangent because each of those are reciprocals of each other. So they've got on here, I don't know if you can see this, but this is done in gray. This is a sine curve right here. Okay. Now this is not part of the cosecant graph, but it does allow you to see how these are the small positive values that when we find they're reciprocal, they're these huge positive values. Small negative values create this huge negative value. And you can actually go through and you could graph uh, a sine and a cosine curve for each one of the secants and cosecants and then do the reciprocal of each one of those. I find that a little bit uh, tedious and a little bit difficult. Okay, You'll notice that when we graphed the secant graph, I graph this part of the branch and that one. It doesn't really matter. You could stop one full cycle and go from here to here. Or in this book, um, they actually did from 0 to 2 pi and said, okay, take these small positive numbers, their reciprocals are large positive numbers. Small negative numbers, their reciprocal is this branch of huge negative numbers. And then same back on the positive side. So it is possible to graph them that way. I kind of like the whole pieces, but that's just personal preference. And then you'll notice that what was done here is this isn't a direct um, transition downward here. You'll notice that they did start over at zero and, and go down for that cotangent graph. So these are the graphs that we've created today. They have the same domains, periods, amplitudes, and, and, and asymptotes and stuff like that that we've talked about. Um, they're just all presented in one concise format. So if you need to come back and look at that, um, be my guest. You're, you're welcome to do that. So you do have some problems on your assignment that ask you to look at a graph and figure out, well, can you give me an equation or match it up with an equation? So let's take a look at this one right here and let's think about this. Now, I've moved this so I don't have a cheat sheet to look at, but you can certainly see the top of your page here. What graph has this type of pattern where it starts up here and it goes down like that? Well, that, that's, that's got to be a cotangent, right? So we do y equals cotangent. Okay, now... You'll notice that on this one right here, it has a period from here to here. That's how far it is in, in between the asymptotes. So if it's got a period of 1, that's a lot smaller than what the period used to be. The period used to be pi. So we must have had a period change factor to speed this up. This is 3.14, and now it's only 1, so we must have sped it up. Well, if you think about this, remember the new period equals the old period divided by the period change factor. Well, if the new period is 1 and the old period was pi, what does that mean b has to be? Well, b's got to be pi. So this would be pi times x. And let's think about that. Does that take care of everything? Does that, does that change that enough? Without um, knowing what all of these points are, gosh, that certainly looks pretty darn good. Would that be a period of 0 to 1? Yeah? Looks pretty good. Starts in the right place, goes up to down. I mean, we're we're in we're in pretty good shape there. Okay, that would be a good guess on that one. Let's take a look at this one. These graphs are a little bit more difficult um, because there are two graphs that actually look like that. And for this, I am going to change this um, and make this a little bit smaller so we can take a look there. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay. So let's think about this. We've got a graph that has a branch opening downward right centered on the y-axis. It's kind of like an even function. So if I were to look at the two of these, I probably would side with this one right here and say we could take a secant graph and we could flip it upside down. So we could do y equals negative secant of something. Now, we'll notice here that, well, let's see, from here to here, so a period one complete cycle, 
takes, let's see how long it takes. We start at negative 1. It's got a, 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 another asymptote at 1, and then another one at 3. So to do one whole cycle, you've got to start here and end here. Or I suppose if you wanted to start here and end here, that would be fine. But either way, the period's going to be 4. So the period is 4 units. Let's do the same thing we did before. The new period should equal the old period divided by the period change factor. The new period of 4 should equal the old one, which is 2 pi, divided by b. So if I solve this, I get b equals 2 pi over 4. So I get b equals pi halves. So that would be the period change factor. So this is going to be pi halves times x. And we didn't, well, let's see. We didn't slide it up or down. And for a secant graph, we didn't slide it left or right. But normally, um, this graph has a range. Make this a little bit smaller. This graph has a range from negative infinity to negative 1 and then starting again at 1. Is that how this one looks? This one doesn't, well, that's a 1 right there, so it definitely starts at 2. So how can we make this be vertically stretched? Well, let's put a 2 in front of that. Okay? So that looks pretty good right there. Now, if you take a look at those for just a second, um, you know, that looks pretty good. And I think those equations describe each one of those graphs separately. But you might think about, well, wait a minute. What about on this one right here? Couldn't we have taken this graph right here and maybe slid it over or forward one, a couple of units? Couldn't we change the period of this one and slide it over? And then it would start with this branch up here and so forth. It's completely possible to do that. You can take transformations of each one of these and turn them into each other. But I think this is the most straightforward way to do each one of those. Okay? So hopefully that's good enough with that. Um, let's turn our attention to these last couple of problems. I've got several that we want to graph here. So about six more that we're going to graph. Um, and hopefully this goes relatively quickly. Some of these we can do on the calculator. Um, so it says, and, and again, I just want to mention this. If you need to watch this video again uh, to make sense of this so you can do the homework, please do. Um, or come and ask me a question and, and we'll get it cleared up. Um, but this says graph two full periods in a useful window, and we want to do this on the calculator. So go ahead and grab your calculator. And remember, I've said quite a few times that it's always a good idea to have a, a rough sense of what your calculator is going to give you. So remember, this is the secant of pi x. Think about what pi does to that. that uh, it's going to change the period. Instead of having a period of 2 pi, it's going to have a period of pi. So if I were to just type this into the calculator and then just blindly go through and tell it to graph, um, clear this off, I'm going to do secant. So again, you've got to think about how to put a secant into the calculator. It's the reciprocal of cosine. So this is going to be 1 divided by cosine of pi x. Okay, so that's what we need in the y equals menu. Okay, um, again, we want to check the mode. I'm in radian mode, so I'm in good shape there. Now, if I were to just do this, let's say I hit zoom, and let's say I did the standard window. So let's hit zoom 6. That looks like an absolute mess. Okay, so one of the things that we'd want to do is maybe um, zoom in on this just a little bit. Let's do the decimal window. So I'm going to hit zoom 4. And my gosh, that actually looks pretty good. Okay. Um, there is a button on here that says zoom trig. So if I hit zoom 7, I guess you'd think the trig window would make this look better. It doesn't. And let me show you why they call this the trig window. So I'm going to hit the window. This is about negative 2 pi. This is positive 2 pi. And hopefully you recognize the 1.57. That's about pi halves. And then it's got a, a y min and a y max of from negative 4 to positive 4. Okay. So let's think about what, what this does. Um, whoops. I, I just realized I, I made a mistake here. I put the wrong thing in here. This is pi, so the period is 2. Okay. So if you think about what the secant looks like, it looks like this. Normally, this goes from negative pi, ha or pi halves, pi halves, 
and then this would be 3 pi halves, okay? So that there's 2 pi units here all together, okay? We've got a period of 2. So this is going to go from, well, let's see, if this is 2 units all together, well, gosh, really all you'd have to do is just take off the pi. So let's say that's 2 units, that's 3, that would be a 1, and that would be a negative 1. So what we're looking for is a graph that has asymptotes at um, negative pi half, or negative one, negative one half, one half, and three halves. Okay? So let's come back here on the calculator and let's hit zoom decimal because that one looked pretty good. And there are a lot more cycles than we need. So let's do this. Um, let's change our window and let's go from... Uh, let's divide this by 2, and let's divide this by 2. And dividing those numbers by 2, even though those numbers are, are pretty ugly, what it does is if I hit the trace button, Notice how it's still going to jump in fairly nice, nice intervals. And let's see what happens when I get right here. Remember we said at, at uh, half a unit we should have an asymptote? Look, there's no y value there. And if I go to, this would be 1.5, there should be no y value there either. Okay, So that's how we can get a, a good look at what the, the graph looks like. So I'm going to grab this. Let's see. And we'll paste that in here. So we've got a decent looking graph there. Okay, now let's turn our attention to these next problems. Um, they want us to solve these um, on these intervals. Um, now, this one here, you could actually do this without uh, using a calculator, especially if you've got this memorized. Uh, tangent of x equals pi thirds. Well, there is an angle in uh, the first quadrant that has a tangent of pi thirds. We actually talked about it earlier. Let's take a quick look here. Pi thirds would be the angle. Okay, so let me make sure I said that right. There is an angle that has a tangent of radical 3. The tangent, whoops, the tangent of pi thirds is equal to radical 3. Okay, But that's just in the first quadrant. There might be several other answers to this. So let me show you um, how we're going to do this. Think about what the tangent looks like. It looks like this. Okay, Sort of like that. And then we want to know where the tangent graph equals uh, radical 3. Well, radical 3 is about 1.7, and it would hit right here. And that would be the first answer, pi thirds. But here's how we can get the calculator to answer this for us. So I'm going to graph the tangent function. So I'm going to clear this off and type tangent of x. Close the parentheses. Okay. And then in y2, I'm going to graph square root of 3. So that's just going to be a horizontal line at the square root of 3. So let's take a look at what this looks like. And again, um, it would be useful if we did this. We've got to go from negative pi halves to pi halves. So let's go to the window and let's go from negative, whoops, negative, Sorry, negative 2 pi. I better make sure I'm slowing down and saying these right. So this is negative 2 pi and then to positive 2 pi. And because this is about 1.7, I'm pretty satisfied that that's going to give us a pretty good viewing window. So once I've got my x min at negative 6.28 and uh, the x max at 6.28, negative 2 pi to 2 pi, I'm going to go ahead and hit graph. There's the tangent graph, and here comes, there's our horizontal line, okay? So it hits here, which we've got depicted right here, but it also hits here, and it hits there, and it hits there, and so forth, okay? So um, there are actually four answers here. One, two, three, four. There are four times where it intersects that, um, uh, from negative 2 pi to, to 2 pi. Um, so let's think about how we can find this. And, and one other thing I want to point out is it's not drawing in the asymptotes. Your calculator's pretty dumb. What it's doing is it's connecting this dot that it did up here with that next dot that it does down there. It, it doesn't know that those shouldn't be connected. 
So it's not really drawing the asymptotes in there, although that's kind of what it looks like. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to hit calculate. So that's second trace. And we're going to find the intersection point. Okay, so we're going to hit intersect. And then it says, is the first curve the tangent of x? And to say yes, I just hit enter. Is the second curve the square root of 3? And to say yes, I hit enter. And then it says take a guess. Well, let's find this one first. Let's find that one right there. Okay, so that looks like it's pretty darn close. So I'm going to hit enter. It's going to find it. And the answer is um, it, it intersects at 1.047. Okay, so one of the answers is x equals 1.047. Well, we think that ought to be pi thirds, so let's just type in pi thirds, pi divided by 3. So it's 1.047, so that's the right answer. But then let's go back to the graph and let's consider this. How often does it hit that? Okay, How far is it in between here and here, this point where it hits and this point where it hits? Well, that should be how long it takes to cycle. Well, the period is how long it takes to cycle. That's the horizontal distance. So one answer should be, we'll write it exactly, one answer should be pi thirds, whoops, pi thirds, and then it should repeat every k pi. So we want answers in the interval from 0 to 2 pi, so let's do this. So we'll grab the calculator and we'll quit this. We're going to do 1.047 plus, let's do 1 times, Okay, so there's another answer, 4.188. Well, let's put a 2 right there. So I'm going to just recall that, and I'm going to put a 2 there. Now, here's the problem with this, okay? That's outside the interval 2 pi. So if I come back here and I look at the graph, I found this one right here. The next one is off the charts. Okay, I only need to go forward one pi, and then I need to go back one and back another one to find the other two. So let's go back to the, the screen here, and then let's recall this, and I'm going to type in, now we're going to subtract, I'll do one, okay, so negative 2.09, okay, so there's one, two, three, and here comes the fourth one. Again, I'm going to recall that, put a two there. And you'll notice that that is negative 5.23, negative 5.236. Okay, now, just to kind of belabor the point, um, let's see. Let's go to the, the graph, and I hit trace. Now, this point right here, negative 5.23, that ought to be that one right there. So I'm in trace mode, okay? I'm going to type in negative 5. 0.236. Now, if we're right, this should jump right on that point right there. Let's hit enter, and there we go. Okay, so we're pretty convinced that those are correct. This one would be done the same way. In y1, you're going to put 1 over the sine of x, and in y2, you're going to write in the square root of 2. And I think that one's a little, little bit easier to do, okay, finding those answers. Okay, so there are four answers to that one. There may be three or four. You could take a look and figure that one out, okay? So um, that covers all of the, all of the basics. Um, let me take a look here. Um, so here's what we'll do. Um, if, if class is up and I'm over my time, um, you can stop and, and uh, pick up the video here and, and finish these off uh, later tonight. But I'm going to go through and I'm going to graph these right now. Um, but I, I'm not quite sure how long the video has been going at this point. So, But um, if you get the ideas, these are basically the types of problems that you're going to see. Um, and, you know, these do take some practice. Um, so you've got to be really careful about these. Um, and it also says, are any of these below odd or even? And, and we're going to take a look and we'll figure that out. So let's take a look at this one right here. So this is 2 times the cosecant of pi x. So let's see. That's a vertical stretch. And that pi changes the period. So the period is going to be 2 pi over pi. So that's going to be 2 for a period. And then I'm just going to think about what the parent graph looks like. 
the parent graph, and this was cosecant, this is the first one we did, it had a branch that went up, asymptote, branch that went down. Okay, so this was zero, and this was one pi, and this is two pi. Well, we haven't moved this anywhere, so it does have a period of two, but it would start at zero and it would end two units later. So this isn't going to be pi, this is going to be two. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote here, vertical asymptote here, vertical asymptote here. Now, I'm fine with you just labeling one complete cycle, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, I've got a branch that goes up like this, and I've got a branch that goes down like this, and we probably ought to make sure that they look like they're roughly the same amount above and below. This would be zero, this would be one, and this would be two. Again, two periods to complete one full cycle. That asymptote is right in the middle between zero and two, okay? Um, then I need to find out where these points are. And I, again, I'd be satisfied if you can label those points right there and label the asymptotes. So notice that we've got a vertical stretch. So this would be up here at two units. This would be down here at negative two units. So I need to label each one of those points there. So this is going to be, well, halfway in between zero and one is going to be one half comma two. Halfway in between one and two is going to be three halves comma Remember, we already decided that was negative 2. It would be nice if you labeled the asymptotes with uh, equations that equal vertical lines, but that's what we're after right there. So that's a good graph. We've labeled all the important parts. <clears throat> we might consider that the next one, if we were to draw a branch over here, that asymptote, and it would look like that. This certainly isn't an even function. It's not symmetric with the y-axis, but it is, it is an odd function, okay? just like the sine function is an odd function. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at the next one. Okay, the next one is one-half tangent. That's already been factored out, so that's kind of good news. And then this is uh, x plus pi-fourths. So we've got um, a vertical shrink. Everything's going to be half as tall as it used to be. I factored out a one-half. That's the period change factor. So the new period is the old period divided by the period change factor of one half, so that means the new period is going to be two pi, and then I've got a, a phase shift of negative pi fourths. Okay, so let's think about this. Um, normally, the tangent looks like this. It's got one at negative pi halves and one at pi halves, and the period from here to here is pi units. So in order to have a period of 2 pi, I would have to go forward pi and back pi, okay? So I'm going to have one that looks like this. Forward to pi and back to pi. And it's going to go like that, okay? This would be 0, 0. That would be smack dab in the middle of the two of these. So this is going to be pi halves comma 1. Oops, got that vertical uh, sh uh, shrink right there. That would be 1 half. And this one right here is going to be negative pi halves, comma, negative one half. Okay? So that takes care of the period change factor. That takes care of the vertical shrink. But then I've got a phase shift of negative pi fourths. So I want to move that entire graph backward pi fourths. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and mark things off in pi fourths. So if this is pi fourths, that's pi halves, three pi fourths, and that's pi. And then the same on the other side, pi fourths, pi halves, three pi fourths, and so forth. Okay, so I've got negative pi fourths, negative pi halves, negative three pi fourths, and this is going to be negative pi. If I went one more pi fourths, that would be negative five pi fourths. Okay. Now, I need to take these points and I need to slide them all over pi fourths units. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the asymptotes over. That'll kind of give me the walls that I'm going to use here. I used to have an asymptote at pi. Now I'm going to have an asymptote pi fourths less than that, so that's three pi fourths. I used to have an asymptote at pi, negative pi. Now I've got one at negative five pi fourths. Okay. It used to go through 0, 0. This point right here is 0, 0. Now it goes through negative pi fourths comma 0. So negative 
five fourths comma zero. And this point usually is, or at least on this shape, is pi halves comma one half. So this is going to be pi fourths comma one half. So this part of the graph looks like that. And then this part of the graph is going to look uh, very similar. It's going to be over here. Again, notice how this is kind of, if this is like, uh, call this a middle line right here, notice how this is right smack dab in the middle. That's going to be negative 3 pi fourths, comma, negative 1 half. Again, pretty darn complicated graphs. Um, and those might take a, a second look in order to figure out and so forth, okay? All right, last two that we're going to take a look at. Notice that I've got a vertical flip with the negative and a stretch with the two. Um, this is a vertical shift with the plus one, and I've got a period change factor. So the period now is two pi over pi, so that's, whoops, two pi over pi, I gotta write it and say it, right? Okay, so that means the period is just two. So let's think about this. We've gotta make the right shape. Here's what the shape normally looks like. Secant normally looks like this. With an asymptote at negative pi halves, pi halves, three pi halves. That's where it normally looks, okay? Because then it's two pi from here to here. Remember, this is only two units for a period. So what I can do is I can change each one of those, get rid of the pi. That's where those should be. Okay, now um, that's where the asymptotes are. Um, let's see, I've also vertically flipped it and stretched it. So let me draw another step right here. We're going to flip it over, so it's going to go here and then up here. This is still negative one half. Oops, this is one half, and this is three halves. And it's been vertically stretched by a factor of two, so this point right here and this point right here, this would be negative two, and this would be positive two. Let's identify these points. What's right in between uh, one half and one and a half? Well, that would be one comma two. And this point right here would be, I'll label it over here, this would be zero comma negative two, okay? That takes care of everything in the, so we've, we've uh, vertically flipped it, we've vertically stretched it, we've changed the period. So I've got the right shape. The only thing left to do is slide everything here up one unit. So you'll notice that if I slide everything up one unit, the only things that are gonna change are just Y coordinates. So I still have a vertical asymptote at X equals negative one half. I still have a vertical asymptote at x equals positive one half, and you want to make these look like they're they're um, uh, spread roughly the same amount apart. Okay, so I've got from here to here, and then probably about right here, this is going to be x equals three halves. Oops, that's not negative. Okay, so an asymptote at negative one half, an asymptote at one half, and an asymptote at uh, at uh, three halves or one and a half. Okay. Beginning, middle, end, there are the quarters. That would be zero, and this would be one, okay? And then I need to take this graph and I need to slide it up one unit. So there's one, two, three. So this point right here is gonna be at one comma three. And this one right here, if I take zero, negative two, and slide it up one, it's gonna be right here at zero, negative one. So it looks like that. Again, the asymptotes are labeled, all the important parts are labeled. I'm not interested in all six key points on a graph like this, just those three. Again, if you need to watch this video again, uh, be my guest. And we better hustle and get this finished up. Okay, so let's take a look at this one right here. Vertical stretch right here on the cotangent graph. And this is a period change factor of one-fourth. So let's think about what that does. The old period is pi. Divide by one fourth, so the new period would be four pi. And I've got a vertical stretch right here. So it's gonna be taller than it used to be. And it's been slowed down, so it's gonna be a lot wider than it used to be. So the graph normally looks like this. Vertical asymptote here and vertical asymptote here. Goes like that. This is normally zero and this is pi. 
this is going to be 0, and now it's going to be 4 pi. So smack dab in the middle of 0 and 4 pi is going to be 2 pi. Okay? So let's draw those. Vertical asymptote here, vertical asymptote here. X equals 0 for that one. X equals 4 pi for this one. Smack dab in the middle and the quarters. And it's going to be shaped like this. It's going to start up here, go through that point, and then go down like that. And it's, it's always nice to put arrows on the end and stuff like that. Now, let's label that point right there. Smack dab in the middle of 0 and 4 pi, 2 pi comma 0. Smack dab in the middle of, of this half. This is going to be pi comma. Think for just a second. Let's go back and look at the original graph. Normally, this would be one unit above the x-axis. But we vertically stretched this, so this is four units above the x-axis. Maybe it doesn't look to scale, but if we label that, we've got the right point. And then this one would be symmetric over here. So this is going to be, well, let's see if this is pi. This is 2 pi. This would be 3 pi comma negative 4. And there we go. Labeled asymptotes, labeled the three key points, and we're all set. So thank you very much. Again, see me if you've got questions. Watch this again if you need to. Really good things to get a handle on. Uh, we're after the basics. Some of these graphs here, I'll be honest with you, a little more difficult than I, than I would have liked um, and maybe that I should have put on here. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we've got all that. So feel free to go back and watch it again or, or ask me questions.